a post COVID nineteen world, uh, how is there? Are there any changes uh, to what you guys are looking at? I mean, how does this relate to uh, the new new world we're going to be finding ourselves in once we clear through this? Yeah, th- that's a really important question. I mean, um, we will all have to adjust to the to that post COVID world, as you as you as you call it. Uh, and it has to do with procedures that will have the stations ensure that everybody is safe and that we uh, comply with any requirements, uh, you know, from the sanitary authorities and so on. But uh, one characteristic that this train has that is actually going to enable us to be uh, better prepared for that is that from the very start, our design is based on complying fully with ADA requirements, Americans with Disabilities Act uh, requirements. And that means that the spacing of our seating, the size of our bathrooms, the um, width of our aisles, uh, the pitch, the distance between seating um, in each car, and so on, the, the size of our doors, all of that is larger than uh, what is customary in the industry. So for that purpose, we will have a lot more space for less people being transported, and that will definitely allow us to be more uh, better prepared to face, um, you know, any any circumstance such as the one that we're having today. Uh, there are some studies that show that uh, high-speed rail will be favored, and this is mostly in Europe, uh, as a result of COVID at the end of um, of this phase that we're going through. Uh, but as I say, because of our design and the way we've approached it, uh, it, it actually will allow us to be better prepared for it. Well, I, for one, am excited. I know Sean and I have talked about it, talked about going down and grabbing a Mavs game, watching an SMU game, and uh, coming back the same night. So uh, we're looking forward to seeing the project uh, come to fruition. Uh, Carlos, if our listeners wanted to stay informed on, on the project, where sh- where could they look? Well, first of all, you can... Text train to 52886 to stay informed. And of course, uh, you can reach us at uh, www.texascentral.com and all the taglines that uh, are, you know, in that link uh, for all the social media platforms. So uh, all of those are accessible at the, at the website. Well, Carlos, this has been really good information for us. It's been great information for our listeners, and we really appreciate you taking some time out with us. We look forward to talking to you soon, and uh, just you know, stay safe, and, and we'll catch up down the road. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, great talking to you. Thank you. That is Carlos Aguilar, the president and CEO of Texas Central. Uh, we're going to take a quick break and be back to wrap up right after this. This is Deconstructing Dallas. <laughs> Deconstructing Dallas, Ryan Trimble, Sean Williams. Sean, what a great, great segment, man. I'm, I'm fired up to uh, to hop on the train and head south. Me too. The, the great thing about talking to Carlos you know, and the, the times we've had an opportunity to spend time with him is just how much information he is constantly carrying around with him. You know, I would have to have I'd have to have mountains of notes and facts and figures and probably books and manuals. And he's able to rattle all that information off, uh, which is great that for a project this important that we have somebody like Carlos that's that's in charge. Yeah, it's really cool. So a big, big shout out to Carlos again for uh, for coming on with us today. Sean, I know you've been uh, enjoying. some some uh some ESPN content man i have been enjoying content from every platform i feel amazon netflix hulu but every the last couple of sundays i have found myself wrapped up all the way wrapped up in the last stand 
the ESPN 10 part documentary that is chronicling the last, the last season, the last dance, the last dance of the last season of Michael Jordan and the Chicago Bulls. And man, it, it has taken me back to a place that is so fun to to retrack and revisit because the Bulls were my favorite team because the local team at the time was terrible. <laughs> uh, and so I had to root for somebody and I tracked with the Bulls. And it was like from my, when Michael Jordan hit the scene, it was probably my, I'd say eighth grade, seventh, eighth grade year, all the way through college and my uh, first adult years. The year they won was by literally my graduation year going into uh, my first year after college. So yeah, uh, this has been a fun time to, to watch, um, watch this, this documentary. Yeah, for sure. You know, it's fun. I need to, uh, I need to play catch up on it, but uh, uh, it's, it's funny. My, my best buddy guy I grew up with, uh, I, I knew it was going to be a big deal because uh, this guy never misses an opportunity for uh, shameless self. <laughs> and I love him dearly. And I'm proud of him, and I it, it's all worth it. But uh, the night before one of the episodes where Jordan's uh, standing in front of a bunch of campers, I don't know if it was like the mm-hmm. ADE camp or whatever, mm-hmm. but uh, uh, or Nike camp or something. But this guy, he's now a coach at University of Memphis. He's coached the NBA, but uh, <laughs> he, he shamelessly uh, grade everybody else in the picture out except for him and Jordan in the crowd and posted that and said, get ready, everybody. I'm in the last dance tonight. So, uh, <laughs> I obviously need to play catch up to keep up with, uh, the great Cody, Cody Topper. So, uh, I mean, with Cody and his self promotion skills, I'm, I'm shocked that we have not had him as, as a guest yet because he would fit right in. Uh, he'd be in, great. In he'd be great. So whenever they come back through, uh, <laughs> Memphis comes back through. We'll have to try to get him on. Yeah, he was a little miffed the last time because SMU bit him and got him, so uh, he was not pleased. But well, maybe, maybe by the time we get to do this again, you will have had a chance to watch an episode or two. But I, I can tell you, it is great theater. It's my pleasure to you, Sean Williams. All right, man. Well, um, let's 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 do this again. This was fun. It was uh, an experiment. Uh, as such, but it was great to have a great guest on. So I'm down to try this again. We had uh, some technical help for sure from Michael Zavalos and MZ Studios. So uh, I, I'm really excited to have Michael on board. Yeah, big thanks to Michael. He's a good good dude and uh, figured out all the uh, all the technical stuff uh, that I am not even close to able to accomplish. So thank you, Michael. Well, this has been Deconstructing Dallas, Sean Williams, Ryan Trimble. We want to thank our listeners who have stuck through this and are picking us back up. It's been a minute and we've tried to figure out how to get this content back on track. And it looks like we have. Uh, Yes, please do not excuse the pun. Kind of just flowed with that. Um, but we are excited to to keep this rolling. And so thanks to Jennifer Pascal and Mary Willeaf, the owners of Allen Media. We want to thank our entire team who has uh, really worked well through this crisis. We want to uh, just ask you to please share this as folks are look, looking for stuff to listen to and take a part in while we're still at home. Please share this with your friends. Share this with your family. Let people know. Uh, you can find us on social media. I am at Sean, S-H-A-W-N-P Williams. He is at rtremble15 on Twitter. Uh, please share this with your friends and fam and let us know what you think. So until we have an opportunity to come back again, this is Sean Williams, Ryan Trimble. We are Deconstructing Dallas. Adios. Adios.